Hello, this is Pastor Boyle from Revival Baptist Church, and I wanted to take the time to show you the Bible way to heaven. I know there's many people out there claiming that they have the way to heaven or they know the way to heaven. In fact, if you ask 10 different religions, you're going to probably get 10 different answers. But what's interesting, the Bible is very clear on that subject. And if you'll take a few moments of your time to allow me to show you from the Bible how that you can be saved, you can know in your heart that you're saved. And I want to start in 1 John 5, 13. The Bible says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. The Bible is telling us that it's been written so that you as the reader can know that you have eternal life. I find it interesting that there's many religions out there teaching the way to heaven, but they don't even know their own selves. You ask them, are they 100% sure that they're going to heaven? And you'll be surprised many people are not. Yet the Bible's very clear, you can be. And so I want to start in Romans chapter number 3, and verse number 10, and the Bible reads, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. And this is an important place to start because there's a lot of people who don't think they need to be saved. They think they're good enough, that they're righteous enough. But when God looks down from heaven and he sees mankind, he doesn't see religious and non-religious, good and bad. He says there's none righteous, no, not one. And the reason is found in Romans chapter number 3, verse 23, there the Bible reads, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So God puts all mankind at an even playing level. He doesn't see the good and the bad. He just says, hey, we're all sinners. We all come short. There's none righteous, no, not one. Now, today you'll see many institutions, religious institutions out there that are just filled with people who go in and they're dedicated and they're loyal and in their heart, they think that what they're doing will make them righteous enough to go to heaven. But as God sits in heaven and looks down, he says to all mankind, there's none righteous. No, not one. And then, of course, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I like to explain it this way. Let's say this Bible is heaven. Down here is all mankind. We're all trying to work our way to heaven. And the Bible says it doesn't matter how good of a life that you've lived, you come short of the glory of God. Nobody is good enough to work their way into heaven. So the very first step to being saved is to realize that you need to be saved. And that you're a sinner no matter how good of a life you've lived, no matter how many days you've been to church, no matter how many times you've been baptized, God says you're not righteous. No, not one. Now, the second thing we need to know in order to go to heaven is not just that we're a sinner, but that there's a price attached to that. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. And the Bible's very clear in the fact that we're all sinners. There's none righteous, but now he's telling us there's a wage attached to that sin. And that word wage, we don't use very much, but we still use a little bit. If you work a job, you've heard of minimum wage, a payment, a paycheck. The payment of sin, according to the Bible, is death. Now, when the Bible talks about death, there's two parts. We're probably very familiar with the first part. That's our physical death. We've been to the funerals. We've seen the casket. We've seen our loved ones laying there. That's the physical death. But in the book of Revelation, it talks about what happens after that first death, and it's called the second death. Allow me to show you in Revelation chapter 20, this second death. The Bible reads in verse 14, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So the Bible's telling us the second part of death is either hell or a lake of fire. One of the same. You can call it what you want. It's a literal lake of fire for those who have sinned. Well, my friend, that's all of us. That's you, that's me, we're all sinners, we've all come short, and we all pay the same price. See, it doesn't matter how much sin that you have, but the fact that you have sin. And that's what's important is God is laying the playing field, everyone's a sinner, we're all worthy of that place called hell. Now, there's the rest of that verse here in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, it says, for the wages of sin is death, that means you're a sinner and you deserve to go to hell. But the rest of the verse is where it gets really exciting. It says, but the gift of God is eternal life 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. And there's three things in this verse that I want to show you that that will, when you're done, you'll have a peace in your heart knowing that you're saved if you'll receive the Lord Jesus Christ. And number one is that it's a gift. Did you see that? Bible says, but the gift of God is eternal life. God says that eternal life is a gift. Everywhere else you go, they're going to tell you it's a reward. You have to work and earn and do and live a certain way and keep the commandments. And maybe if you're good enough, you'll get that reward and he'll say, come on into heaven. Well, if that's your, th- your philosophy, you're not going to make it because there's none good, no, not one. We all fall short. But if you receive the gift, a gift is not deserved. A gift is just given, no strings attached. Heaven is a free gift. In fact, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Verse number 9 tells you why. It says, Not of works, lest any man should boast. And you see, the Bible says if you could work your way to heaven by being righteous and going to church, when you get to heaven, you're going to wipe the sweat off your forehead and say, whew, man, I'm glad I was a good person. But see, the Bible says that's not how you get saved. You get saved by the gift of God, not of yourselves. And there's several places in the Bible that describe heaven as a gift. And so that's the first point to remember is heaven's a gift, not a reward. But then secondly, it says it's eternal life. I mean, how long is eternal? The very word eternal means never-ending. The Bible doesn't say he gives you long-lasting life. I mean, if he did, that would still be a pretty good gift. But it's not long-lasting life. It's eternal life. If God says something is eternal, that means it never ends. And so when you get saved and you receive that gift, which is freely given, you don't deserve it, we deserve hell. It's an eternal gift. The Bible says the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If God calls it eternal, and you can lose it, there's a lot of people out there that think, oh yeah, i got to have Jesus, but then i got to live the right life. That's not a gift. That's a reward. And that's not eternal, because what happens if you don't live the right way? God comes and takes it back. God says, nope, no longer saved. You didn't live the right way. God says, no, I'm going to give it to you, and it's eternal. And so that tells me that when I got saved, I'm still saved today because it's eternal. It never ends. And so no matter how long of a life I live here on earth, I'm always saved. No matter what I do in life, I'm always saved because it's a gift, not a reward, and it's eternal, given through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And then the third point we bring out, one, it's a gift, two, it's eternal, and three, it's through Jesus Christ, our Lord. There's no other Savior on earth but Jesus Christ. Your church can't save you. No, all those other gods out there that people worship and, you know, Buddha and Muhammad. There's a lot of people that just think there's a deity out there. Well, the Bible says in Acts 4.12, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus is the only one that can save you. Why? Well, the Bible says in Romans 5, verse number 8, but God commendeth his love toward us, And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Remember what the wages of sin was? The wages of sin is death. What did Jesus Christ do for you? He paid your wage of sin. You see, he lived a perfect life. The Bible tells us he's God in the flesh. That he lived a perfect, sinless life and died on the cross Not for his sins, he had none. The Bible says, but for our sins and the sins of the whole world. And so when Jesus died on the cross, he was paying the price for your sins so that you don't have to. And the Bible tells us that not just his body paid that price, but his soul went to hell for your sins and to my sins. But on the third day, we know what happened, he rose again. And so he offers to pay for your sin for free of charge. All you have to do is, is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see it's a gift, it's eternal, and it's given through Jesus Christ. That's the only way to heaven. Now I want to show you, just like any gift, I can sit here and explain it to you and tell you how wonderful it is, but it doesn't become yours until you actually receive it. You see, there's a lot of people who believe in Jesus, they believe He can save them, they know they need a Savior, but they've never had that moment where they received the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you've not received the Lord Jesus Christ, You're not saved. 
You might think you'll be good enough. A lot of people, oh, I'll wait and see. That's a dangerous place because nobody who waits and sees is getting into heaven. Only those who have the receive, receive the gift of God. And the Bible tells us in Romans chapter number 10, in verse number 9, it says here, and I want to read it slowly because I want you to see it for yourself. This is the Bible. It says, that if, and that little word if means now it's on you. He says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. He's saying you have to put all your faith in what Jesus did, nothing of what you did. You have to believe Jesus, that he died, and that he rose again. He says, if you'll believe it with your heart and confess it with your mouth, thou shalt be saved. He says, I'll give you the gift of God. It's free, it's eternal life, if you just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't see anything else mixed in there. In Acts, the question is asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? You know what the answer was? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. In fact, in Romans chapter 13, the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know what the Bible says? If you will call and ask him to be your Savior, he will save you. He will give you the gift of eternal life. My friend, if you've listened to this, and you've seen for yourself, and you are ready to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I would encourage you to pray with me right now. We can pray right through the, the, the uh, computer screen or however you're watching, the device that you're watching on. It's your heart praying out to God. And if you mean that, if you can sincerely say that all your faith is on Jesus, no longer on yourself, being a good person, been baptized, you got to reject all that and say, I'll never be good enough, but Jesus is. I'll never live the life I need to, but he lived it for me. God will save you even right now. Would you pray with me? Let's pray. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, and I deserve to go to hell. But I believe that you died on the cross for me and rose again the third day. I'm asking you to be my Savior, come into my heart, and give me the gift of eternal life. Thank you for saving me. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, then according to the Word of God, He says it's your mouth and it's your heart. There's nothing more you need to do. So let me ask you this question. After praying that prayer, where are you going when you die? Well, according to the Word of God, and God can't lie, you're saved. Why? Because you've trusted the Lord Jesus Christ. That's exciting. We're, we're a church. Revival Baptist Church is a group of people filled with a group of people just like yourself, who at one point or another in their life bowed their head and received that gift. And we encourage you to come join us. Be part of a growing church, a Bible-believing church. We'll be excited. Come let us know that you received the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll rejoice with you. We hope to see you. Come give us a visit.